Did you know that many doctors get in trouble with PhilHealth Legal because they have no idea on how PhilHealth conducts medical claims on it? Most doctors and hospitals go about it. If you are a medical doctor, a hospital owner, hospital management, or a hospital staff, this video is for you. In the event you are not a healthcare provider, but you are interested in the topic, feel free to join our journey. Please click and subscribe to this channel. So, if you are a clinician or a hospital staff, if you finish this video, you will have three simple tricks on how to avoid problems in PhilHealth Claims Audit. Your keywords are the following. You have history and physical exam, length of stay, and clinical practice guidelines. In my 20 years in claims processing, I have seen doctors and hospitals end up Feel health legal due to problems brought about by medical code. These three tips are just a few of many ways on how to minimize feel health medical audit problems. Friends, let us begin. Now, take note that feel health is an insurance corporation. Part of their task is to do claims review. So tip number one, do not ignore history and physical examination. Now I have noticed that doctors who have been practicing medicine quite some time commonly take for granted the patient's detailed past medical history and physical examination. Now, this may be due to complacency or a simple issue of time management. This behavior leads to poor documentation of the clinical signs and symptoms. Now, PhilHealth being an insurance corporation somehow wants to see the admissibility factors or the clinical necessity to admit patients. So, for surgical cases, PhilHealth wants to see the indication for surgery. Your claims will potentially be in trouble if you fail to indicate patient's signs and symptoms that will provide clinical necessity for admission or the indication for surgery. Now, these signs and symptoms can only be seen if a good history of present illness and a good physical exam was done by the doctor. So, do not ignore your history and physical exam. Most importantly, document these clinical signs and symptoms in the chart and fill out claim form 4. So, if your patient do not have medical necessity to be admitted, please do not admit the patient. So, tip number two, be careful short length of stay. Now, the length of stay is the duration of a single period of hospitalization. Short length of stay is one day or two days confinement. Now, Reduced length of stay in the hospital has both positive and a negative implication. So in many first world countries, reduced hospital days are being promoted. This prevents hospital infection and it can reduce unnecessary costs in hospitalization. So this is the positive implication. However, there are trade-offs. The negative implication is that the reduced length of stay might increase the risk of readmission due to poor 
quality care during confinement. So for claims audit, the short length of stay is a trigger to conduct further review about chronic and complex illnesses. So patients who suffer moderate to severe illnesses with short length of stay may experience underutilization of services and poor quality care. So this short length of stay is again a trigger that will lead to quality measures in the effectiveness of clinical care. So illnesses with very short length of stay will create unnecessary attention from the medical community. If your claims have a short length of stay, make sure these are not complex or chronic illnesses. Make sure your clinical management is not compromised. Then, this brings us to tip number three. Avoid deviation in the clinical practice guideline in clinical management of your patient. So, clinical practice guideline is a document with the aim of guiding decision and criteria regarding diagnosis, management, and treatment of patients in specific area of healthcare. So take note, PhilHealth does not make clinical practice guidelines. They just adopt it from medical societies and medical specialty societies. However, a few of the CPGs were used as policy statement as the basis of standard care. Friends, click the link on claims medical review in relation to clinical practice. Now, as an insurance, it is important standards of care must be in place because it will affect quality care of the patient. Now, in my experience, PhilHealth agrees that the clinical practice guidelines are mere recommendations. They are not cast into stone. It is not a violation if the doctor will not follow the CPG 100%. However, if the doctor's clinical management involves gross deviation of the clinical practice guidelines, this becomes a violation. So, what is gross deviation? Gross deviation means there is a conscious intent not to follow standards of care in arriving with a final diagnosis. So, as a result, the final diagnosis is not related to the clinical management. My friends, the three tips Again, are the following. You have history, physical exam, very short length of stay, and lastly, gross deviation of the clinical practice guide. Learn more in the next video, Five Mistakes in Handling PhilHealth Legal. This is Coach Dog Ben. See you in the next session.